Okay, Jackson. What did we just do? We got another cat. We got a white. Who's crazy? Who's crazy? It's like and now we're gonna cute. see if they're gonna fight. Look at its eyes. Look at the eyes. You're like so small and cute looking. I wanna see we're the gonna see if they're gonna Whoa, fight. The entire white. body's white except for his ears and his end of the tail. So cute. I was actually, mom was the sucker for that when I saw a picture and had to have it. <laughs> Even though I'm allergic. It's too cute to catch up, huh? Uh -huh. It loves see? being snuggled. Okay, I am getting ready to go out of town here at the end of the week. So one of the things that I want to get done before I do that is get a better watering system put in place for some of my small animals. So for the rabbits and quails, um, I want to get kind of an automatic watering system in place so that we don't have to worry about whether they get watered uh, enough each day and those kind of things. So in, at my last house, we had a system with a five-gallon bucket and a series of tubes and these little watering nipples. These are actually for chickens and other poultry. I found that the rabbits actually uh, liked these really well also. And I liked them a little bit better than some of the other water nipples that are made for rabbits because these don't get clogged up quite as much. And they're pretty cheap. You can buy a whole bag full of them for a pretty reasonable amount on Amazon. And then as they go bad and start to leak, I just take it off and put on a new one. So that's what I'm going to work on today. Uh, first, I've already drilled the hole in the five-gallon bucket. And I've got this. It's a leftover piece from... Um, my air compressor actually and some of the pieces that went to my air compressor and I'm just going to screw that on and then with this nipple I'll uh, put the tubing on the end of that and I'll have a, a good little uh, watering nipple for getting the water to the animals. So I'm going to install this today and then let that dry because I'm going to put some silicone on it and then either tonight, once this is dry, or maybe tomorrow, I will go ahead and install this for the animals and get them kind of trained up over the next couple of days before I go out of, out of town so I know that they're comfortable using it and they're getting adequate water. Water is one of those things that the animals have to have enough, especially as hot as it is this time of the year uh, in the summertime. We've been We've been in the mid to high 90s this week, so I do not want uh, my animals to not have enough access to water. So that's what we're going to work on today. Put on a little Teflon tape. I don't know if this will actually make a difference, especially as thin as the bucket is, but it doesn't hurt to put it on, and if it'll help a little bit, I guess it's worthwhile to so that off. <clears throat> Gonna get started in that hole that I already pre-drilled. And I'll use the ratchet. until tomorrow. Okay, so we've got somewhat of a temporary setup for our rabbits and quail right now. 
we've had them right here. Uh, this is a nice spot for them for now because it, they get shaded in the afternoon uh, from the house. So we, we picked this spot because it gets the most afternoon shade. Rabbits do not tolerate heat very well, so we wanted a spot with good shade for them. Eventually we'll put them out uh, closer to the trees out back where the future garden site will be. That'll be a nice spot for them because then their manure and droppings and whatnot will be right where it needs to be and we'll just be able to move it a short distance into the rows where we want it for the garden. So we like our animals uh, that will be using the manure close to the garden. But for now, this is what we've done since we've just recently moved into the new house. This is just, like I say, a temporary location for them. But where we're going out of town soon, I wanted to make sure they have their watering system in place and they're all set. So I've got the lid that is usually over top of them to protect them from rain and, and uh, sprinklers and those kind of things off for right now, just so I can get the uh, tubing where I want it to be and then I'll put the lid back on, but just will let you watch what I do with the tubing and the, the watering nipples here. Okay. <laughs> had a leak and was the one that was in the quail pen had a leak so I just replaced it with another one now it's working just fine it's more of a drip than a leak uh, it just isn't sealed for some reason around the, <clears throat> the silver piece that they peck at so the water just is a constant drip so I went ahead and just replaced that with a different one and now it doesn't have the constant drip anymore so each of them is getting water and should work just great. I'll watch it over the next couple of days before I go out of town just to make sure there aren't any problems but this will be a much more stable source of water uh, for for the animals especially while I'm gone for a couple of days. They should be just fine for really a couple of weeks uh, with without having to rewater but we'll still check every day when we're here. It's just those two days when we're gone that I was worried about. One word of caution with the rabbits, you don't want the tubing to go into the cage at all. If the tubing goes in, they'll chew at it and chew through it until it leaks and then all your water will just run out. So you want to wire them up to where just the nipple part is through into the cage and none of the tubing. All right, thanks for watching. Okay, I'm back from our camping trip and just wanted to do a follow-up video for the end of our rabbit watering system and show you how it worked. Okay. Here's our bucket. You can see it's down. Probably about a third of the water is gone, so about two-thirds of that bucket remaining. So, that worked out great, and it kept the, the rabbits watered and well taken care of while we were gone. Alright, 